and welcome back to the Blue Hub YouTube channel and today we're going to be taking a look at the different options and settings with the Dia and Zero integration. So we'll take a look at the required accounts that you'll need and we'll also, I'll also walk you through the different configuration options that you have available. So first of all, once you've got Zero all set up, you'll, you'll then see a pop-up in the left-hand corner which is where you can see all of your Zero information. But before we do that, we want to go and make sure we've got all our settings correctly configured. So to do that, we can go ahead and go to integration. And then we can go across and click zero. You can also go to my integrations and click zero from there. So there's lots of different options you have in here of a different configuration. And I'm just going to walk you through a couple of the main ones. OK, so zero invoice status. This is just telling Dia how um, telling Dear and zero, how you want your invoices to be sent across to zero. So do you want them to be sent across as draft? Maybe if you want to make some changes or do you want them to go across as authorized to save that manual step? Payments, you can choose to have these sync both ways or pulled from zero or only push to zero. Most people have this on syncs both ways, but you might have it on pull from zero or push zero if you just want one process to be followed. I imagine the most common route for people is pulled from zero because the traditional route is authorize your invoice in DIA and then that pushes the invoice to zero, allocate your payment in zero and then that will be pulled from zero into DIA. Okay, so different options there. Most people go with syncs with both ways. Export of cost of goods sold. I imagine most people want to keep this turned on. So DIA will export your cost of goods sold journals and create those for you. Export purchase orders to zero. Now, if you turn this on, then DIA will send and create a purchase order in zero. If you have this turned off, then your purchase order will remain in DIA and DIA will just send a bill across to zero. OK, so again, depends on what you want to do there. Show journals on cash basis reports. You can choose whether to turn that on or off. Treat all zero contacts as customers. Again, that's up to you um, if you want to have that turned on or off. Sync invoices and credit notes for. So this is just letting you know, um, telling the integration, do you want to sync invoices and credit notes for these different areas? So you've got DR API. DIA and point of sale. So for example, if you didn't want to sync anything from the point of sale, then you would untick from that, from there and it would only sync invoices from DIA API, i.e. Shopify, WooCommerce, any bespoke in e-commerce integrations you have and then DIA, any normal sales that you've processed in here. Category one and two. So this is where you can map your tracking categories. So DIA will pull over two tracking categories from zero and you can tell DIA what these relate to in the DIA. So, for example, I have a tracking category of region, then I may want to map this to a certain um, field within DIA, such as perhaps um, product additional attribute. So I'm just telling the two systems, my tracking category of region relates to product additional attribute one in DIA. OK, and if you have a second one, you can pull that over as well. We've then got load items from zero and load invoices from zero. So this is if you want to pull any um, products or items that you create in zero. I recommend turning this off because you're going to have a lot of service items, etc. in there. So you want to keep that turned off. You've then also got load invoices from zero. So that's if you want to pull any invoices from zero. Again, I recommend turning this off because otherwise you're going to have overheads and um, energy bills and Wi-Fi bills and things like that coming over to DIA, which you do not want. Export attachments to zero. I recommend turning this on. So if you attach any purchase orders or any other important documents to invoices in DIA, then they'll actually be sent across to zero and stored within there. So that's very useful. Auto synchronization. So if you turn this on, then you can tell DIA when you want to sync and how often. If you turn this off, then you will need to sync manually, daily or hourly by coming to the top left hand corner and selecting sync now. Again, if you go auto synchronization, you just need to set a start date, how often you want um, DIA and zero to sync 
And if you want Dia to alert you of any errors via email or internal notifications, if you select email, then you'll need to select a mailing list. If you don't have a mailing list, we do have another video on our channel um, of how to set mailing lists up. If you select internal, then you'll just get a notification in the bar icon at the top like so. A few other options in here are consolidation information. So if you want to consolidate information that goes across to zero, so for example, um, consolidate sales invoices and credit notes, this is quite commonly done for um, DIA API. And that's where you might consolidate. You might have all your invoices in DIA from Shopify. You've then um, fulfilled all of those different invoices, but when they go to zero, you want to consolidate them consolidate them down to one and then when you receive your payment from Shopify it makes that reconciliation process much easier so this is just where you can choose to consolidate them orders you can also do them for the point of sale and dear back end as well should you wish you can also do that with payments journals and any money tasks that you've created in dear and in terms of actual settings really that's about it um, the only other one is disable integration and change organization if you want to change um, the zero account that you're actually connected to. So those are most of the settings that you'll need to consider um, for the DIA and zero integration. If you need a bit more information on any of those, just feel free to leave a comment down below and I can get back to you. The other section that you'll need to manage when setting up your DIA and zero integration is your actual chart of accounts. So you want to come into reference books. And then you'll want to come down to account mapping. OK, and there's actually two sections you'll want to refer to here. So we have account mapping and we have chart of accounts. OK, so account mapping is where we actually tell DIA what accounts we want to map to. The chart of accounts is where we can create our chart of accounts. So if you if you need to create an account code, I recommend creating that in zero and then coming to this page here, reference book chart of accounts and just selecting load from zero. That will load any new account codes that you've created and it'll allow you to go and input them onto the um, account mapping screen. OK, so once you've loaded your accounts from zero, you may not need to do this um, because if you've just set the integration up, it's going to pull those across. This is really just if you've added in a new one and you want to fulfill it, um, put this into the account mapping screen. Once you've done that, you can then come to the account mapping screen and start to map your accounts. OK, so it's important to remember that these are your default account codes for each journal or transaction type. If you use any um, unique accounts at the product or customer level or sales level, then they will overwrite these. If they're blank, then this is what will be used. OK, so, for example, um, if we choose default revenue account here, if a product doesn't have a, a special account code or a customer doesn't have a special account code, then to, account code 200 will be used. If a product, we have a special revenue account against it, such as raw material sales, then raw material sales will be used instead of 200 sales. OK, so inventory control account, that's the first one that you'll need um, up here. And that's, of course, a current asset account. So you want to select that in there. Cost of goods sold, so that's just where all your cost of goods sold journals will be posted to and where um, the costs will be accumulated from. This will need to be a direct cost account. Tax liability account down here, so that's where you could, that's where all your tax um, transactions will be posted to. Customer credit account, so that's a, that should be a current liability account, so that's used for prepayments on sales quotes, so like deposits. In transit account, so this is a current asset account again. So this is where um, journals will be created when goods are in transit, mainly from um, stock transfers. So if you create a stock transfer, it will be moved from your inventory account to in transit. And then when it's received, it will be moved back to the in um, inventory account that you've selected. Current year's profit and unrealized currency gains. Um, unrealized currency gains is really for um, if you've got changes in FX rates. So you can just select that in there. Inventory discrepancy. So this is used for stock takes and stock adjustments really in the system. So this should be an expense account. You've then got your default revenue account, which is of course um, a revenue type. So you can select sales in there, for example. 
you've then got work in progress. So this is where any journals will be sent to when you're completing a manufacturing operation. So when you start a manufacturing operation, they'll be moved from raw materials to work in progress. When the, the manufacturing operation is completed, they'll be moved from work in progress across to finished goods. Okay, and that should be a current asset account also. Supplier deposits, similar to the customer credit on the left hand side, that should be um, other than, rather than a liability, should be a current asset, sorry. And then finally, we've got gift card liability down here, that which is if you're using any gift cards in DIA, and that should be a liability also. So I've already mentioned that if you if you if you're not if you don't have any in here, make sure to create them in zero and pull them over. Now there are two final accounts that you'll need to consider, and that is if you go to settings, general settings, and purchase process customization. And if you have um, accrued inventory transactions turned on, you will need to create a goods received not invoice account and a goods invoice not received account. Goods invoice not received will be a current asset and goods received not invoice is an asset or liability account, okay? So this is if you follow any uh, accrued transaction processes. I'm going to do a separate video on how these journals work um, following this, which you can also access on our channel and we'll go into it a little bit more detail. Um, but for example, if you receive the goods and don't receive the invoice till the end of the month, but you want a cost against those items received, and that's where you would want to turn this option on and vice versa. If you get invoiced way before you receive the goods, then you'll want to use the accrued transactions process. OK, so we'll cover that in the next video as well. Hopefully this has been useful for everyone just to cover the settings and the common, common things that we get asked um, and how to map those accounts. If you do want to see anything else around like the synchronization logs, um, I'll try to cover that in our next video. But please do leave any comments down below. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one.